Hi, let's talk about PCB manufacturing and how you can easily come a gutter and there's a real trap for young players in terms of uh, the manufacturing tolerances and manufacturing specifications for PCBs and possibly to do with uh, Gerber generation as well. And this comes about uh, from a discussion we had on the Amp Hour, hasn't been released yet, but by the time this video comes out, probably will be uh, released as an Amp Hour episode. So let's take a look at some PCB design stuff. And yes, due to popular request, I have green t-shirt floating Dave head. <laughs> Let me know down below if you like this. I think it's a bit weird. I think I've gone a bit far. I said I should write a script to like uh, randomly like like make my head just float around like in a... <laughs> Lissages pattern, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? So let's talk about when you get your PCB manufactured. Let's go over to JLC PCB here, only because that's uh, the one that was uh, discussed in the amp hour and somebody came a gutter on this, I won't mention who, but anyway, it's it's a real easy trap and you're almost gonna certainly cop this if you uh, like push the envelope in terms of clearances and, and PCB specifications, you're doing really fine pitch BGA stuff, you need to route stuff out very finely then. Anyway, you can really come a gutter. I'm sure I've covered in previous videos one of the first rules of when you start laying out a PCB, you know, you've done your schematic and then you import all your part footprints and your net list and you're ready to start routing, you set up all of your uh, clearances, you set up your uh, trace widths and, you know, other sorts of, you know, trace to via things and your via hole sizes and, you know, you set up all this stuff first before you start routing. And you base that information, all the track and space and clearance and design rule DRC checking stuff on the capability of the PCB you're getting manufactured. Especially if you're going after one of these cheap $5 prototyping services and you need to do something really fine, like fine traces and, and clearances and things like that, uh, this is where you can come a gutter. So normally you'd go down here and you go minimum trace width and spacing. Every PCB manufacturer will have their capabilities uh, page. So you go over here, minimum uh, trace, track width and spacing. This is the main one you want here. And the PCB in question was a four layer PCB. So they actually have a better specification here for uh, four layers. They actually have 3.5 mil or 3.5 thou, which is equivalent supposedly to 0.09 millimeters for your four and six layer boards. It's not as good for your one and two layers. They're a bit more loosey goosey on those. That's, you know, five thou uh, clearance. But 3.5 thou clearance sounds like, oh, you know, that's, that's heaps. I can do anything with that. Well, then let's have a look at that, shall we? But the first thing to note is 0.09 millimeters here. Does that actually equal 3.5 mil? Let's get our confuser and check. So 0.09 millimeters divided by 25.4 millimeters, because they actually, at one point, can forget the date, but defined it spot on as 25.4 millimeters is there it is. Oh, it's back to front. Sorry. Yeah, the camera's back to front. Oh, I'll just read it. 3.5433070087 thou. But they've rounded it to 3.5 thou here. So they've, whereas it's actually 3.54 thou. So you might say, well, what's the big deal with that? It's close enough. Rounded off. Well, aha, uh -huh. here's where you can come a gutter. Because you're only paying five bucks for your board or whatever, you're sharing a panel with like a hundred other designs, they don't want to dick around and spend time and treat you special just for your one hundredth of that one board, right? So they have these limits for a reason. And if you have a look at everything else, everything else seems to be like in millimeters. We've got clearances. Here we go. Clearances, everything's in millimeters, but they gave you the value in thous. So if you like laying out your PCBs, as I do, with all your traces and spaces as thous, and there's nothing wrong with that, then you can come a gutsy. If, if you go in into your PCB software and set your limit as 3.5 mil or 3.5 thou, you're actually going to be under that 0.09 millimeters so they're gonna or their software their gerber uh checking software will automatically reject your boards 
they won't just automatically manufacture it. They'll come back to you as the example on the amp hour. They come back to you and said, hey, sorry, you don't meet our specification. But then you go to them and say, oh, but look, it's on your website, 3.5 mil. Well, 3.5 mil is actually different to 0.09 millimeters. And it looks like the manufacturing engineers at the PCB company, they sort of, looks like they're using millimeters metric for everything. So even though they've, you know, just tried to be nice and giving you this in 3.5 mils, just be aware there is going to be a rounding error here and you can fail your their automatic check-in and then you might have to go in and redo your entire board because they're not going to be flexible enough. For five bucks, they're not going to be flexible. They're just going to say, sorry, your board's rejected. Please meet 0.09 millimeters. Doesn't matter what it says on the website. So first rule is beware of companies that mix their units like this. So if we're in our PCB software and we're in like in change between inches and millimeters here, I'm using KeyCAD uh, by the way. Uh, if you go into inches mode and then you set up your board, you know, you're about to lay it out and your track uh, width here, you've set it to precisely 3.5 mils. So aha, uh -huh, I've obviously met their specification. No worries, she'll be right. And then you go in there, but if you switch to millimeters and you lay out your whole board, you can spend a whole week laying out your board, go to get it manufactured, and then what? They say, sorry, we're not going to touch that with a barge pole because it's slightly under and they do care. All it is is a go, no go thing. Doesn't meet their 0.09 millimeters. Well, if you switch to millimeters mode, oh, we're 0.0889 millimeters now. Wah, 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 wah. Hang on. So, and there's no point arguing with them either. They're not going to argue with you, as I said, for their five bucks board or whatever. If you're paying for the whole panel, like if you're paying hundreds of dollars tooling charge and you're getting the whole panel, right, they'll, they'll bend over backwards to accommodate you. If you're getting these cheap boards like that and you're one of a hundred different designs on a panel, they're not going to care. You're under the 0.09 millimeters and you've come a gutter and they're not going to make your board. So you might have to go in there and then change all your traces and then you might find all the clearance looking here let's say you widen that to like four mils something like that oh look see we've violated our clearance rule in here for um the spacing between the pad and the trace here aha uh -huh. we've got different specs for that so if you've gone in there and gone oh okay i've changed all my traces to four mils yeah no worries uh let's run the design rule checker and you run your dlc and you go wah, 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 wah. track too close to pad because that's their minimum specification for the like distance between the track and the pad like that and you've just you're just a smidgen over only needs to be a smidgen over remember this is software doing this right humans aren't going to override this unless you're paying the money and then they'll rub their chin and go, oh, yeah, yeah, she'll be right. No worries. You know, but no, they're just going to automatically reject your board because it's, you know, 0.01 millimeters over the, you know, the tolerances that they specify. Let's go back to the website here and trace width and spacing is not the only thing you need to look at. You would think that, okay, the minimum spacing is, three, you know, 0.09 millimeters. So you set that and you're good to go. Uh-uh. Look at this, right? These are their minimum. They've also got minimum clearances for all different types of geometries. And they can be out by large values too. Let's have a look at this. So let's have a look at the difference, uh, the minimum spacing between a track and a pad, which is actually what we've got here. We've got a, a pad and a track on our BGA chip. 0.2 millimeters. So much for your 0.09 millimeters. Wah! You can only do, in th look, they, they could reject your board because it's only, uh, you know, if you're closer than 0.2 millimeters. Wow! So let's go into our board setup here. Let's go into our nets. Uh, 0.15 millimeters clearance. Well, what did we say? It's 0.2, right? That's what we need between a pad and uh, another trace right so you might have you would have to net classes you would have to set up different net classes because we have different specifications or you might run your drc twice for example and then have uh, differences between trace to trace specification which is 0.09 millimeters and a trace to pad which is 0.2 millimeters so if you go in there the, i've got a 0.1 millimeter grid here right so 0.1 0.2 millimeters that's the absolute minimum that they will accept for pad 
to trace. You know, if you've got a BGA chip here, right, you can't route out these traces like this. Uh, this Just assume that this trace is actually connected up there. I can't do this because I don't have a schematic. There's no netlist. And it looks like in KiCad, you can't manually input a netlist like a, a generate a new net on the PCB to join this track to this track manually. Anyway, it doesn't matter. So just assume that that's that you wanted to route uh, these traces out here between the pads like this. You couldn't do it on that JLC four layer board. They could actually completely reject your board if you wanted to do that. You'd have to put a VIA in there and drop them out. So yeah, just be careful. Like rule number two is look at all the different specifications. It's not just the, uh, the trace width specification, minimum traced width to space in, you've also got all these other things. And then they've got like, uh, you know, the, the the pad to the track and things like that, via to uh, track and all sorts of other different specifications. And they can be really tricky to actually program into your software. I don't know how you do that in KiCad actually, because I'm, I'm not a huge user of uh, KiCad, but they could reject your board just based on that. And imagine if you went to all the time and effort to lay out that board and find, oh, you couldn't get your $5 prototype. Wah, 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 wah. Or not all manufacturers are going to be, uh, you know, like have these sorts of differences. Some of them, will, all they'll care about is trace width and spacing. And technically, there's no manufacturing etching process reason why there should be a difference in the specification between the, a track, a, a copper track and a copper pad and two traces like this, just two traces separated apart. In fact, the, technically the requirement's more stringent for the two traces parallel like this, because you could have two traces running right across your board like that, and they're only like, you know, 3.5 thou, 0.09 millimeters actually between them, and you just gotta etch out that little tiny slither of copper, whereas a track to a pad is like, technically, you know, it's only that one little bit there. So what's going on here is it must be uh, to do with drill tolerances because a pad, a typically this shows a hole. So it's there's going to be drill tolerances, drill wander and drill uh, tolerance. They can, you know, little skid off a little bit and you can potentially get breakouts in your pad. That's why you need minimum annulus rings on your vias and your pads and stuff like that. And really if that wanders across and if this was only 0.09 millimeters away, then technically, even though your pad would still be good it might you know it, 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 it could wander closer to the track and then if your track's only three and a half thou it might break it uh, you know things like that so but technically copper to copper there's no difference that's why some manufacturers will only give you this um, track and space and that applies to everything but JLC have decided like you know quite a few manufacturers do they have different tolerances for different things definitely something to watch out for and you'll see there's definitely a drill related aspect to this because it's got PTH which is plated through hole to track. This is just pad to track, i.e. copper to copper. This is actually from the hole. You'll see it's it's not from the top here. It's actually from the hole uh, over to the track just in case the drill wanders. You know, wiggle, 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 yeah. And then you've got like totally contradictory stuff up here. Nothing to do with holes. 0.127 millimeters for pad to pad clearance. Pads without holes, different nets. What's the difference between that and the two traces down here which are going to be different nets uh, but it's there technically they can reject your board you know you think you got 0.09 but technically if you've got two different nets with two pads 1.27 millimeters thank you very much so yes let, let's just look at the example here this is a bga this is not a dense bga um or a fine pin pitch bga this is 0.8 millimeter pin pitch this is like you know, almost positively enormous by my, you know, compared to like this one over here. Let's go over to this one. This one is 0.4 millimeters. So this is half the pin pitch of this one over here. <laughs> Look, this is the keep out that you need around that pad in theory from JLC PCB. You couldn't even route, you couldn't even drop a via down there on this 0.3. Now, whether or not JLC actually push that point, you know, actually enforce that point two millimeters, uh, you know, pad to, or whether or not it's only through hole pads, why that would make a difference, I don't know. Um, pad to trace, because maybe they could, uh, you know, the drill could slip and it could come near the edge of the pad or something like that, and you could get a possible breakout and then that could potentially break through your trace or not. 
maybe that's a that's a thing, so they might not care. But hey, a via is going to be a drilled hole, unless you know all this laser micro drilling and stuff like that. But we won't go into details. Like even at 0.1 millimeters okay look at that oh if yeah you'll just have a room for a via in there maybe <laughs> but we won't go into the specifications for vias and the annulus ring and you know all that uh, sort of uh, stuff so anyway i'm sure i've done that in uh, previous videos right so let's just say that your manufacturer had a 0.15 millimeter clearance for example right and you were trying to route out this bga here and you set your trace to three and a half uh, mil here three and a half thou you know, you've got a little bit, you've got a little bit of room left in there. Don't push the limits of these specifications. Like I would go like, you know, can we go 3.7? Something like, yeah, we can easily go 3.7 and still we're not going to come a gutter on those clearances. So don't push the limits. Just because the manufacturer says you can do 0.1 millimeter uh, trace or 3 thou trace, don't do it unless you absolutely have to and you're absolutely careful about your metric and imperial units and the conversion to and from. Now, there's actually another way that you can uh, come a gutsy here, and that's actually when you generate uh, Gerber files. It's not really going to be a problem in KiCad here, but it can be in other software. When you plot your Gerbers, most packages are going to give you the option. Uh, they call it the coordinate format. But really, it's it's resolution. It's how many digits of resolution you're going to export in, into your Gerber files. Now, uh, KiCad give you two only two options here, which is good, as we'll see in a minute. Uh, four point five, a uh, four point five or four point six unit millimeters. Is it? I don't like the way they've named this because, as I said, it's resolution. What four point five stands for is it's not not actually four point five. It's four is the number of uh, significant digits before the decimal point. So in terms of millimeters, you can have 9999 millimeters, right? That can be your maximum maximum number it can put in the Gerber file. Then the dot five, that means five decimal places. So with reference to one millimeter. So effectively, this uh, choosing this 4.5 option gives you a resolution of 0. 0.0005 millimeters, which is more than enough. You're not gonna, you're not going to get wor have to worry about rounding errors between uh, you know imperial and metric and stuff like that. Doing that and 4.6 that'd be 0. 0.0006 millimeters resolution. Got it? But other packages like Altium here. Because, uh, you know, Altium's a, it's been around a long time, probably before you were born. And if we go to our fabrication outputs here and we generate our Gerber files, okay, they give us the option in inches or millimeters here. And if we go to millimeters and they don't use 4.2, they use 4 colon 2. So that means, you know, four significant digits and... Uh, two, only two decimal places for millimeters. So if you chose this 4.2 option here, it would generate, go, oh, it actually tells you here, has 0 0.01 millimeter resolution. 4.3 has one micron because it's 0 0.001, got it? But it varies with inches. You saw that KiCad, it, as far as I'm aware, it only has the option to output Gerbers in, in metric, uh, whereas Altium can do it in millimeters. And uh, you can have the same thing with reference to one inch here. So if you choose two, three like this, it has a one mil resolution, one thou resolution. If your trace is 10.5 mil, for example, right? 10.5 thou, when you actually render that, it's going to render that as uh, either 10 or 11 thou. It's not going to give you your 10.5 thou. You're limited in your output resolution. Okay, so what I've done is just place some traces here and I've set them at different widths. So I set it at 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 4, 5, and 10.6. Now let's generate the Gerber for this uh, thing and let's choose that 2, 3, I, I eat one mil resolution. It warns you here, um, two, four, and two, five only need to be chosen if objects on the grid are finer than one mil or one thou. And we've got that. If you don't understand what this format is, you can kind of come a gutsa. Let's generate our top layer. And 
Bingo, we've got our cam file down here. Oh, this this camtastic Gerber view, Gerber view is awful. I'm going to something else. So let's use the Gerber viewer in uh, KiCad, shall we? Unfortunately, I can't get right on there, but you can see it's exactly the same. It, has, it hasn't increased the resolution there. Unfortunately, I believe this is like the lowest grid. I don't believe you can set a custom or finer or non-snap grid in KiCad. Please leave it in the comments down below. In the Gerber viewer, you can do it, a custom grid in the PCB, but Gerber viewer seems to be different. So it's somewhat annoying. So, you know, please bear with me, but like, you know, near enough, good enough for Australia. There you go, that's 11 thou. Okay, it's jumped up to 11 thou. You can see how just the resolution is not there. Let's just generate that again, but using 2.5. So that'll give us a 0.01 thou resolution, right? Plenty, absolutely plenty. So let's do that. Bingo, we've generated that. Open PCB2. Now, hopefully, we've got different size traces here. Oh, it's like 10 point, let's call that 10.1. Anyway, you can see how that is over 10.2 there. That's just the resolution on here. You can see that just the Gerber viewer resolution is not there. Let's go to the second last one, which is supposed to be uh, 10.5. And yep, yep, there we go. 10.5 mil, near enough, because the Gerber viewer is not perfect. But if you had a perfect Gerber viewer that let you measure that exact, let, let me know if you can actually get the information, how to, can you just click on that object and get the width? I don't think there is in. Anyway, you can see how that resolution option in generating your Gerbers can make a difference in roundings. You thought you were safe with your 3.5 thou, uh, you know, minimum or whatever, and they reject your board and you're like, oh God, I can't, I'm gonna have to reroute this thing or like large parts of it uh, because you were trying to push the limits of your PCB designs. So there you go. There's three ways you can come a gutter there actually with uh, getting your PCBs manufactured like this. The first one is uh, the difference between the rounding errors between Imperial and metric and how your particular manufacturer actually enforces uh, those. And you don't expect miracles for your five buck board delivered or whatever it costs. Um, yeah, if you pony up the money, yeah, they'll bend over backwards. But otherwise, no, don't get angry at them because, oh, you said, oh, on your website 3.5 thou and I set my thing to 3.5 thou and I spent a week laying out my board you damn well better manufacture it for five bucks like no <laughs> they're just going to tell you to bugger off so yeah just be careful especially when websites like do those conversions and they don't add up you know if they're going eh, it's 0.09 millimeters or 3.5 thou same thing you go well no it's not <laughs> you should question like really question them or simply don't push the limits unless you absolutely have to and if you are pushing the real fine limits probably you don't want to use the prototype uh, services anyway you know you might uh, pay you know pony up a bit more and get uh, you know like better tolerances and more controlled and more flexibility in that sort of thing. So the second one can be those differences between trace width and minimum clearance. Just like, you know, really be careful. Take note of these. Don't just go by, oh, it's three and a half hours. Oh, it's, it's, it's four, four, you know, uh, good enough. I'll set all my traces to four and she'll be right. And you can come a guts with much larger specifications for other objects, various uh, clearances and things like that. And then you've got BGA clearances like this, minimum BGA pad dimensions and stuff like that. These may conflict with these minimum clearances up here. Look at this, point two, once again, 0.25 millimeters, four to see minimum pad dimensions and stuff like minimum distance between BGA. There you go, 1.127. And this figure here, 0.127 millimeters, that's coincidentally the same as this pad to pad clearance up here. So different nets, nothing to do with holes at all. So one of the issues here could be related to actually the solder mask, which you wouldn't necessarily think of, and solder mask alignment. Because you've got solder mask uh, slithers, I won't go into it, but there's there going to be a minimum thickness of solder mask you need, just like a uh, trace width on your copper layers. You're going to have the same minimum uh, you know, amount of 
of solder mask sliver between your pads like this. So you're going to be limited to solder mask expansion around uh, your pad on your BGA and then not only that minimum but then you also got the alignment as well. So maybe this is partially uh, related to the alignment of, of what they're capable of in their solder mask uh, alignment because then you start getting like solder mask over the pads overlaid onto the pads and stuff like that and that's not terrific but you know what do you want for your five bucks and what do you know they do have a solder mask section here you go uh 0.2 millimeters although that seems to be that's not the solder mask slither that seems to be pad to pad so there you go solder mask bridge spacing between copper pad edges must be 0.2 millimeters or does that mean that they'll touch your gerbers um and like if you don't have the minimum solder mask expansion they'll expand it for you or something like that or you've got too much and they'll uh reduce it mm, don't like that don't like any company touching my gerbers but you may not have a choice when you're using one of these prototype service panels when you're paying for the whole panel yourself you can demand things but not when you design them, not when you use these, you know, five bucks for your five boards on your prototype panel. Nah, you get what you get. As we teach our kids in preschool, you get what you get and you don't get upset. So again, there's no actual process technology reason why there would be an electrical difference between a pad and a pad on a BGA. I mean, technically, if they can do uh, 0.09 millimeters here, technically they can do it here. So it's to do with other factors. Yeah, it's interesting. You've got different, all these different options. And then the third one, of course, is generating uh, your Gerber files, the resolution, which you may not have known about before, but now hopefully you do. So anyway, hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a big a thumbs up. Let me know about the floating Dave head severed. I, I don't think I'll do the severed Dave head. I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. I don't, I'm not liking, <laughs> it's, it's, it's greatly disturbing. <laughs> it really is. Anyway. Catch you next time.